What's up y'all? It has been way too long. So we're gonna make this a quick one. I've had this Sophos box laying around the shop for quite some time and it's got some pretty standard ports on the back of it, uh, HDMI, USB, which tells me there's some sort of graphics in here. And most of these kind of systems have just a standard x86 um, uh, capable board in here and processor. So let's take this apart. Let's find out what's inside. I've been waiting years to open this thing up and do this on camera for you guys. I don't know if you can see it, but to prove that I've been waiting for so long, the little warranty sticker is still there. Yes, I know people are really good at hiding them, but me, I just go for it. Okay. You get to see it before I can even see it. Oh, okay. So it is a proprietary board, but it does have a standard Intel SSD in it. It does have standard RAM in it. Uh, it does have a standard HDMI on it. So I'm wondering what happens if we actually put a monitor on this thing. First of all, let's go ahead and pop out a stick of RAM and find, oh, they glued it in there. You know what? Let's go ahead and get it out anyways. Yeah, let's put a razor blade right near electronics. That's a... All right. There we go. These are... A data... DDR, oh wow, these are DDR4 and they've been sitting here for a long time. Eight gigs? No way. Yes, I know I'm mishandling them because I don't care about these sticks. Uh, 4G and an 8G, so 12 gig of RAM, no shit. Okay, okay. Um, well, we know what the storage is, it's the SSD. Can we load PFSense on it? <laughs> Uh, it's got a proprietary slot in here. It looks like it's just a PCI uh, a slot in here. And this little riser, let's see if we can make a better view for you. This riser is just a PCI connection board. For everyone that I'm hurting your soul by doing this to the motherboard or the circuit boards, I don't care about this thing. I really don't. If we break it, cool. If it works, even better. This thing is so dusty. Um, yeah, it's just a PCI slot for whatever expansion goes into there. It's got what, uh, two, four, six, eight, uh, uh, gigabit ports and then two, or sorry, four, uh, SFP slots. I don't even think those are SFP plus. I'm, I'm kind of confident in that. Uh, this is just a, doesn't give me a wattage on the power supply. Well, that's no fun. One fan plus the one in the uh, power supply. That's not a lot here, guys. I'm not re-recording this video, but uh, <laughs> now that I can remember to turn the light up, I wonder what the processor is. And, all right, so it, lo it looks like a uh, standard Intel uh, ball, print, ball pin grid array socket type. I don't want to take the processor heatsink off quite yet. Um, and I also don't have a P1 screwdriver for this. Uh, are we able to look at the SSD at all and see what that is? Okay, this is an Intel SSD 540 series, and it's only 180 gigs, which perfectly fine for a firewall. That's no hate on there. But yeah, they did use a, a little bit of silicone, which... Okay, I get it. You want to make sure, like, in shipping and, and vibrating environments and whatnot, this doesn't come off. Get these screws out of here. We'll put this SSD back in. They seem to nail it. All right, you know what? My better test is leaving the SSD unplugged. Let's see what the BIOS for this thing looks like. We're, we're going over there because I don't feel like moving a whole bunch of cables around because this is not an HDMI monitor. You would think I have some modern stuff. Although most of the stuff I get is freebies from when we're replacing stuff for clients, which saves me quite a bit of money. Oh, that's cute. This little shroud has little, uh, this shroud has, uh, screw headers that it just rests on. Really cute. All right, let's go over here. This is what happens when you, uh, don't come into your workshop and clean up or really prep for a video, and you're just like, you know what, let's do it, and we just do it. All right, 
Power supply is in. Power supply is on. Monitor should turn on. Screen says Sophos protection. Can you guys see that? Mm, barely. Got nothing so far. Oh. Power. It wasn't in standby. Okay, that's fine. We can easily just power off. Power on. It is an x86 system. Holy shit. Yeah, 12 gig of RAM. Oh, I missed the processor. Insert boot drive. We could totally load BFSense on this. Okay, let's see if I can get a look at the, pro uh, the processor. Uh, Intel Core i3 6100, 3.7 gigahertz. That's not bad. That's not bad. Insert proper boot media. So, yeah. I'm confident we can load PFSense on this thing. I'm excited. Let's give it a shot. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and download the PFSense image. And using Belena Etcher, I'm going to go ahead and put that image onto a USB drive to try and make it bootable. Although I'm not even sure at this point if this system is USB bootable, so we're about to find out. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and log into my current Edge Router X and take a screenshot of all of my current interfaces, all my port forwarding rules, all my firewall rules so that I know what the heck is going on. So I guess I lost the footage for me installing PFSense on the unit, but obviously it's installed at this point. But like a dummy, I totally screwed up the configuration. So what we're watching here is me resetting the config and setting up the interfaces for this. Now let's go to the closet where we install the hardware. ETH0 is my network. Let's go ahead and unplug that. We know ETH7 is the fiber. Let's go ahead and unplug that. We'll put this into the right side of the Synology ear. And the ETH6 is supposed to go into the Comcast modem. Um, but we weren't getting an IP address off of that, and I'm not sure why. It kind of makes me angry. Um, this rack is an absolute mess. Uh, but at this point, we should now be able to... And this is the wrong plug. Oh good, we have a, a spare one here. It's funny. My uh, my old dead net gate is in here before I put the uh, Forta gate in there. Uh, two screws. Did me well. Did me real well. There's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't have a whole ton of features. It is a great NAT firewall. I mean, it's just, there's no way around that. All right, how's this? As I struggle to do this in a way that you guys can still see. And the question that I haven't even asked or answered to myself yet is will it fit? That's not true. I asked myself internally in my own head. Uh, what are we catching on? <laughs> the plug. Can we jam it? Yeah, we're going to jam it up against the wall. Okay. Cool. Let's put the two screws in there to hold it. This thing just barely fits. No, my boy. All right, so that line comes over to here. We'll take this above here and we'll plug this right into here. Probably should power cycle the Comcast modem too. Okay, so, all right, the power switch. Well, at least that's accessible. All right, so we said number one is the WAN, and two is the LAN. Should we reconfigure that so we match? No, I'm going to go against the grain because I, 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 I'm just I'm that way. Um, all right, so we know that port one is actually port zero, and we know that port two is actually port one. And where's the Comcast line? Did I drop that? Son of a... Uh, no, white line. White line. And we're never going to get anything on the screen unless uh, we can load an LED driver for it. I'm not sure if the same LED driver for the uh, watch guards would work on this, but we can certainly give it a shot. Uh, but let's wait for the boot up noise.
I almost kind of wish that I installed the uh, serial version of PF Sense. I'm sure there, I hope there's an easy way to fix it or change it. That way, if I ever want to come in here, I can just connect to the serial port. Success. All right, let's go to the computer and configure this bad boy. So picking back up with where we left off a little bit earlier, where we were resetting the config for PFSense, this is where I'm just waiting for the unit to come back online and start responding. Um, and even after it did start responding, I was having trouble getting the web interface open and I think it was just a cache issue. I still don't have a definite answer on that yet. But uh, after I cleared out the cache of the browser, and I think I opened up an incogn another incognito window, I was able to get into it and start going through the wizard. And now we start configuring all the IPs, the interfaces, the WANs. I added all my VLANs to it, um, started making some firewall rules, uh, and then eventually I ran a uh, speed test here just to make sure that I was actually getting the speed through the system. Uh, this thing isn't tested, and it was never meant to have PFSense loaded on it. But uh, after I ran a speed test and saw my speeds, I uh, consider this whole thing a success. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me on this video and this quest. Seriously, that thing has been sitting in my server room for a long time, and I really have never gotten around to it, and I said, screw it, tonight I'm going to take some time to myself, and I'm glad I did. Um, it's nice to be back on PF Sense. It's been quite a while since I've done that, but uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know how it goes. Uh, follow me on TikTok, bgp for me and if you're not, please subscribe and click that like button on here, and uh, follow for more videos. See you guys. Bye.